now we'll discuss uh, about the glass welding process in principle actually glass is having range of temperature over which it become uh, softer and becomes more flexible that is called the glass transition temperature so when by heating we can bring in that situation uh, at this point um, if we try to give some kind of uh, shape to the uh, glass uh, then it will take the uh, after that if we follow the uh, cooling then glass actually takes a particular shape so this is the in general the processing of the uh, any kind of glass components and but when it crosses through the glass transition temperature then it will become a very thick sluggish and kind of viscous kind of liquid and when viscosity enhances and uh, definitely the surface tension actually decreases so it becomes very sticky uh, honey like structure so welding can usually takes place by simply pressing two melted surface together so in this case what happens that we bring the by heating the glass is a kind of uh, improve the viscosity of this uh, glass material and at this point and just simply pressing the by pressing it the two different uh, glass uh, components can be joined and that is a that is a in principle the welding of the uh, glass procedures but two liquids will generally mix and join at the first contact and then upon cooling therefore uh, during the cooling phase glass transition within the glass transition uh, tem uh, phase the welded piece solidify and one solid piece of the uh, it creates kind of the amorphous material so we already discussed that it's a if it's glass uh, normally made of amorphous uh, normally the structure is amorphous structure such that the uh, melting or maybe uh, it becomes more flexible or soften it is a wide range of temperature that is called the glass transition temperature. So this is in principle uh, following the uh, joining of the glass. So but what we can heat the sample? The normal heating source for example simply you can use the oxy gas torch or furnace also can be used to heat the uh, glass samples and because the temperature for melting are often quite high in this case. So um, we, sometimes we need, we need a kind of uh, oxy gas torch or furnace uh, to heat the glass samples but of course the glass the temperature can vary depending upon the what type of the glass we are handling for example lead glass and the crystal uh, then in this cases becomes a weldable liquid at around 870 degree centigrade even we can see that around weldable at around 870 degree centigrade which is quite more even for with in case of aluminum also this temperature and if we handle the quartz glass in this cases the can be heated necessary to heat it around 1650 degree centigrade which is much more and of course even I can say I can tell that it is near about the melting of the in case of steel or iron. So therefore sometimes a tube may be attached uh, to the glass allowing it to blown into the various shape. So when you try to soften it then at this point we try to give the different kind of the shape for, uh, for glass. For example if you use the tube under then such as bubbles, bottles, tubes formation can be drawn and can, uh, can be made during uh, the processing of the glass. But when two pieces of the liquid glass are placed together they will actually usually uh, weld very rapidly during this process. But limitation as glass is very brittle in its solid state so therefore it is uh, never possible to welding or joining or processing of the glass at the solid state normally in other cases welding also we sometimes do the solid state processing or uh, um, solid state joining of the two different components but it is not possible in case of the glass and of course uh, since it is a very brittle so there is a chances of formation of the uh, crack if we do not handle the rate of the cooling during the uh, formation. So because uneven heating and cooling actually induces some amount of the crack during the processing of the glass so that is the main difficulties to handling the glass and this is definitely because of the brittleness of the glass and it does not allow uneven thermal expansion that kind of situation condition have to create to handle or joining of the uh, glass components. But in case of quartz uh, actually is very low thermal uh, expansion coefficient. So where soda lime glass has having very high thermal coefficients high value of alpha. So therefore it is usually important to closely match the uh, thermal expansion coefficients 
such that we can join successfully of the two different components and of course um, to ensure not to happen any kind of the crack because of difference in the thermal expansion coefficient of the between the two components. So, that is the most critical part for uh, handling of the uh, glass welding processes. In general, welded glass in principle has to be cooled down very slowly and evenly through the glass transition temperature and this process is called also annealing that we have already described what is the annealing with one of the phase and the glass processing. So, therefore, to relative any material stresses to internal stresses created by the temperature gradient that kind of situation have to avoid and that is why uh, it needs to follow the annealing process and for handling of the glass in general the cooling can be done very carefully and very slowly that is the main principle of uh, welding of the glass, uh, glass components. Glass welding is a common practice during the glass blowing process, construction of the lighting, uh, flash tubes, there you can see that formation of the glass is necessary. Scientific equipment also we can, we can find out the application of the glass, manufacturing of dishes and other glass wire also. Uh, glass casting for joining the halves of the glass molds, making items such as bolted and bottles and jars also there we can follow the uh, glass casting process to uh, get the desired shape. So, these are the typical application of the glass oiling process or you can find out at the joining of the two glass components or as well as the uh, taking the shape different shape of the glass. Now, I come to that ceramic oiling process of course, we know that ceramic is one another type of material which is huge applications, but there is having the also similar kind of behavior is also very brittle. But this is having the highest potential because of the increased toughness, high heat resistant capabilities and of course, and the non catastrophic failure uh, fracture behavior. So, therefore, all these typical characteristics makes the processing of the ceramics is very difficult and most important thing is the ceramic is also very brittle. If we look into that operating temperature and strength but weight ratio, we see the uh, for operating temperature for welding of the ceramic somehow in between here you can see that around this temperature and where the strength of uh, weight ratio is almost uh, uh, at the middle position and of course, which is completely different from the carbon composite. These are the we, we can see the operating temperature of the ceramics such that we can do the welding of the ceramics. Processes to weld a joining of the ceramics is like that electron beam welding can be done laser beam welding can be done friction welding and diffusion welding normally all the, these processes are normally applied for the joining of the ceramic components. High beam energy is restricted to small ceramic parts for example, can be used only for the ceramics with a defined melting point for example, aluminum oxide Al 2 3 and not for silicon carbide and Si 3 N 4 cannot be handled by using the high energy beam. So, therefore, electron beam or laser beam welding for joining of the ceramic components is limited to a particular ceramic components. One example is for example, Al 2 3. High stresses caused by severe temperature gradient can easily damage ceramic joints. So, that is the one point because ceramics the it cannot absorb the deformation. Uh, therefore, high stresses can be created if their existence of any kind of the temperature gradient. So, that can easily generate that can easily generate damage the ceramic joints. So, ceramic can also be joined by themselves or using the metals by diffusion welding processes, but it is very complicated and large pressure amount of pressure is required specifically for uh, larger components and which is in principle the um, which is the principle of the diffusion welding processes also and high equipment cost long joining times normally leads to the high production cost if we follow the diffusion welding processes. So, most feasible and uh, economical process is bridging for joining of the commercial ceramics components both metallic as well as the ceramic brace can be used for joining of the ceramic components. Properties and applications of ceramics I can see the properties it is a high temperature resistance that is the main uh, properties and the we can based on that several application is possible or ceramic components extremely high hardness low electrical conductivity and therefore, this can be used some insulating material, high chemical resistance as well as the lower density compared with the metals. These are the typical advantages of the 
ceramics and that is why is uh, with this attractive properties a lot of application you can find out using the ceramics. So, therefore, excellent properties reason for applying technical ceramics in the field of electronics, automobile and the chemical industries also and maybe electronics ceramics normally used for the act as an insulator there. In aerospace technology also you can find out the application of uh, ceramics the metals and metals are unsuitable for the hot structure of due to their poor behavior. So, therefore, at high temperature application is ceramics more suitable as compared to the metallic component. And, uh, of course, other point if uh, other point is important there the density is low in case of certain ceramic component as compared to the metallic component. But only the problem is the high co uh, co thermal expansion and coefficient is also uh, very low in case of ceramic. So, any kind of temperature gradient some create problem processing of the ceramic components which may not be the case in case of the metallic material. So, inherent temperature a high temperature limits the metals are also handicapping other major technologies. So, uh, high temperature application that is the advantage of the ceramics as compared to the metal and even ceramic welding is applied during the furnace operation also by conveying the dry mixture of the refractory aggregates and the oxides particles together through specially designed water cool uh, lenses there we can finding out the welding of the ceramics even in case of furnace operation, furnace operation. And ceramics welding helps in no or minimum loss of production and extending furnace or the uh, vessel life that is also another advantage of using the ceramics. Limitation of the ceramic welding the monolithic ceramics either oxides or non oxides are commonly used in the engineering design. The oxides are mainly based on the Al2O3, ZRO2 and with the non oxide silicon carbon and Si3 and 4 these are the typical uh, most uh, components. Uh, we use uh, the ceramics made of all these components, but limitation in the process we can find out either a high expenditure of preparation of the joining part maybe if we look into the joint the two compo ceramic components then non it is a diffusion welding one is the reliable process, but diffusion welding takes a equipment cost is very high as well as the time requirement also very high in case of uh, handling the ceramic components. High expenditure equipment even if we follow the electron beam welding process for a particular specific ceramic uh, components. In this cases the expen uh, that machine cost is also very high in this case. Joining techniques using the additives like brazing are not advisable because the ceramics lose their specific superior properties when you try to bra using the braze joint. But other sense the brazing is the one of the economical process to simply joining the uh, to ceramic components, but joint strength may not be as high as if we follow the other depression welding or maybe high energy beam welding process. Limitation, other limitation for welding of the ceramic components like the difficult to process uh, because of the small resistance to the thermal shock. So, any temperature gradient or thermal shock is normally not absorbed by the uh, ceramic components therefore, that is the one of the difficulties when we processing the ceramics. S since ceramics material is porous material, so porosity tend to be produced in the in the well bit. So, a lot of round of small porosities which are not connected each other are find using the uh, along the fusion boundary. So, that is one of the difficulties of uh, joining of the ceramic components welding of the ceramic components. Relatively small thermal conductivity compared with the other thermal expansion stresses in the material can leading to is the destruction. So, small uh, thermal conductivity is uh, expansion is very low. So, small temperature gradient can create a high stress rise here and that can lead to the destruction of the components that is the most serious problem of handling the ceramic components. Now, we can do the uh, machining of the ceramics and uh, glass process like uh, apart from the joining of the ceramic and the glass components, but here I just highlighted the typical point typical significance points for the machining of the ceramics and glasses. It is also required sometimes. So, application of the conventional machining process for metals is actually difficult for brittle because of the for brittle hard brittle and hard ceramics and glass components. So, therefore, machining cycle times are longer for harder material machining uh, definitely that it is uh, in general that is the general com comments on that. that high time cycle time machine times required if the metal becomes very hard. So, therefore, 
the most of the cases we follow the uh, uh, processing of the ceramics and the glass components simply the grinding is the one of the uh, process and apart from that ultrasonic assistant machining technology has been developed to process to cut or the metal removal in case of the ceramics and glass. But of course, if we compare the grinding and the ultrasonic assistant machining, in ultrasonic assistant machining the metal removal rate is very high, uh, very low as compared to the grinding process. So that is the one limitation, the time requirement becomes very high for the machining of the uh, ceramics and the glass components in general. Laser micro machining of the glass and ceramics are also being developed and using the laser as a source. But ultrasonic processing helps to reduce the sub, subsurface damage because the affected zone using the ultrasonic, uh, ultrasonic assistant machining process is very small. So therefore, since the affected zone is very small and it is confined the machining or the change in the properties whatever temperature gradient, thermal uh, gradient or any other kind of changes that actually happen it is very localized small zone. So that is why ultrasonic processing we can uh, very precisely control the finishing operation in case of the glass and ceramics. So in that sense ultrasonic machining is more is the more suitable uh, for machining of the ceramics and glass if you want to get very high surface finish. Even abrasive lapping, honing and other finishing processes polishing can be used to obtain a good surface finish in general. So, uh, these are the typical points which is associated with the machining of the ceramics and uh, glass components. In summary, uh, for the processing of the uh, non-metallic materials we can say that welding or joining of the thermoplastics are mainly developed with different processes such as the hot gas welding, hot plate welding, ultrasonic welding, spin welding, vibration welding, friction stir welding, even radio frequency welding. These are the different types of the uh, technology has been developed for the processing of the thermoplastics. But ultrasonic welding of the plastics and normally more precise and the less time as compared to the handle of the metallic material or maybe ceramics and glasses. But ultra short pulse laser welding is suitable for the highly transparent material. Uh, we observe that uh, in case of transparent material, if we uh, if we want to join the two transparent material by using the ultra, uh, uh, ultra short pulse laser processes, in this case at the interface the laser actually release the amount of the energy and two, jo two joints can be uh, two transparent material can be joined by using the ultra short pulse, but which may not be possible using the conventional because that laser wavelength is transparent to this particular material. So, in that sense ultrasonic laser pulse is having some advantage specifically for joining of the transparent material. Laser transmission welding is one of the process has been developed which is mainly applicable for the plastic materials, but of course this laser transmission can also be applicable for the joining of the metal to the plastic and we, we can see the different biomedical application there may be some requirement of the joining of the metal to the plastic in that cases we normally follow the laser transmission welding process. And laser transmission welding is mainly applicable plastic material because it is a narrow difference in the thermal properties actually exist. So, that is why it is more suitable there. And glass welding we can see the glass welding uh, is done we can some heat source simply by using the uh, oxy gas torch and or maybe uh, furnace heating is required for handling the uh, glass components or maybe joining of the glass components. But only limitation of the glass components is that the cooling rate becomes very, very slow um, such that um, uneven heating and distribution can be avoided. So, one of the economical method for joining of the uh, uh, joining of the ceramic components is the uh, bridging process. Although the joint state may not be as high as, as compared to the other process, but it is more economical process. Uh, dissimilar welding between plastic to the metal the laser transmission welding is one of the best option that we have already uh, discussed here. So, uh, in this module actually we have tried to uh, look into the different uh, non-metallic uh, materials and normally we focused on the analysis of the or uh, different manufacturing technology applicable for the uh, plastics mainly and that uh, <coughs> thermoplastics within the plastic we can make the two different group thermoplastic and uh, thermosetting plastic. And apart from that uh, what we can handle the ceramics and the glasses glass components. 
So, in this cases normally we discuss that uh, different joining processes mostly focused on this, this module, but apart from that the different machining processes also applicable for the plastic components as well as the ceramics and glass and also we have discussed that joining of the components, biomedical components there is often required to joining of the two components for example, metals and the uh, plastics may be uh, specific applications and that we try to explore what are the different techniques just try to give overall view of the different manufacturing technology which is relevant to the non-metallic materials. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.